Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. If you haven't been here before, this is predominantly a turning channel where each and every week I teach people how to make things on the wood lathe. This week we're going to be working with some beautiful black walnuts. can never go wrong with black walnut. Now I've got two of these and I want to put them natural edge, natural edge together. And what I want to put between this are glow-in-the-dark globes. So I want to pour a whole bunch of glow-in-the-dark globes. I might do some hyper shift globes. Uh, I don't know, there's a whole lot of things we can do. But uh, anyway, the first thing that we need to do is pour them globes so that we can get those in the pressure pot and then we'll be able to uh, clean up these pieces and get them ready for casting. So let's do that. All right, so here's a selection of molds that we're gonna use. Uh, hopefully this will be enough. Uh, there's a couple of things that I need to do. These small little silicone globes are very hard to fill without them falling over so we're going to glue those down onto that and with this piece I find that uh, th I mean this is made for ice it's not so much made for resin but it certainly works for resin uh, I want to glue this shut because I, I find a lot of times it wants to push apart and separate and I might do the same thing for this one as well Happy Friday everyone. Glad you could stop in to watch this week's video and I do upload at 9 a.m. Eastern every Friday. So please join us. These ones here I'm not too concerned about because I've got these little feet. These little globe molds work uh, but you know they're very hard to get the globes out of and very hard to do it without damaging them. So if you have a recommendation for a better globe setup uh, please let me know in the comments. This week we're going to be using Arcast, or should say we're going to be using Arcast for the globes anyway. That way we're able to move forward with the project tomorrow. That's the great thing about Arcast in the Pro Series. You know, 24 hours later you'll be able to move forward with your project and you're not held up. Uh, please mix your epoxy very thoroughly. That way you won't have any issues when it comes to casting. All right, we'll start with these four. Need one more, actually. So as you watch me mix up these pigments, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a glow-in-the-dark themed project. I think that it's going to look really cool with the globes in there, especially with this black walnut. So, And, and as you can see, I'm mixing these pigments very heavy. <laughs> That's one thing about um, glow pigments. You really need to mix them really strong in order to get kind of the desired effect you're looking for. Been getting a few emails about epoxies not curing properly. And uh, usually, especially this time of year, if you've got your pressure pot sitting on the floor in your workshop, well, designer epoxy needs 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit to cure. And if it's sitting on the floor, it's probably not getting that temperature. Okay, so this epoxy is kind of on the cold side, so I'm having a bit of a hard time here mixing in these uh, these colors. So I'm just going to take these in and set them by the heater in my clean room for probably about 10 minutes. And then I'll be able to mix these up and then we'll do the pour. I shouldn't say it. mix these up, we'll be able to pour these. So we still had a little bit of epoxy left, so I figured that I would mix some more up. Uh, we're going to use some Caribbean Blue. And along with that, we're going to put in some Blood Red. And then a couple of Hyper Shifts. You know, I like my Hyper Shift, Purple, Blue, and Green. And Blue, Green, and Gold. One of these days, we're going to do just a straight up Hyper shift project. Love the stuff. All right, it's only been about 10 minutes. Everything's mixed up nicely now. I'm just going to pour, hmm, I'm going to pour probably, yeah, I'm going to pour one of each of these. See how big of a mess we can make. So I definitely want the main globes to be glow in the dark. Uh, the other ones can come in later on. Another thing that I find really makes pieces like this is when you've got different sizes. And I really wish that I had 
a better variety of sizes than what I do have. Don't get me wrong, I think that this is a beautiful vase. I absolutely love it and hopefully you guys do as well. But um, the main focus for me was the glow in the dark pigments. And so that's why you're going to see more of that than anything else. So much for that being glued down. All right. Those are good. Now these mystery molds, I'll call them that, because as you're putting the, the material into them, you can't really see what's going on. So I don't know. I, I'm just adding some of the red with the hyper shift and the, and the forever glow pigments. Uh, I'm just trying to, this epoxy was was starting to thicken up so you know you've got to move along here at a fairly rapid speed for it <laughs> for you to get the best use of it but uh anyway when you put multiple pigments into a globe mold like this sometimes you can get some really cool looks with it i think this mold is separating That's too hard now. I think we'll be able to do something with that. So in this little planet series that I'm doing, we've done a hollow form already. Uh, this is going to be the vase and eventually I'll, when I get done here, I don't really have enough globes to basically fill this casting and you'll see like it is quite a large casting. So whenever you've got excess epoxy left over from a pour it's always good to have something on hand like this that you can pour that into and then hopefully you'll be able to use those later on down the road in a different project and that way you're not wasting your epoxy well that's it uh, all right i'm going to quickly get these in the pressure pot i don't know if it's going to make a difference at this point but it's uh it's worth a shot. Anyway, see you tomorrow. <sighs> okay, well, it's the next day. Um, things are kind of welded to each other. Don't know exactly what's happening here. <laughs> that should be cool. These flat spots, I'll grind these down and we'll stick them I don't know, on the outside of the bucket probably. This is the only real full one. Again, those two glow in the darks together should look pretty cool. Hopefully, anyway. A little bit of red in that one. <laughs> red and then glow in the dark. Same thing. So these aren't meant to be used for resin. I believe these are just for making ice. Uh, <laughs> it's certainly, you could say it worked, but it didn't work. <laughs> uh, I don't think there were too much money, so that's one of the reasons why I bought it. But there's probably better ones out there. So there's that. You do with that. Now, if you do have these molds, just be careful when you're taking these out because they uh, can be really sharp on the upper edge here. That's got some really cool patterns in it. Again with the glow in the dark. Lots of air bubbles on this one at the top. Hmm. <laughs> 
Ugh, these things will drive you crazy. Lots of hyper shift. There, I just wrecked one. It's another cool hyper shift one too. On the larger molds, the silicone is a lot thicker, so you can be more abusive with it, but these smaller globes, not so much. Oh, finally. Uh, anyway, we'll be able to use a lot of these, but I'll have to clean up all those flashing. So the question I've got right now is, do I have enough? Um, hmm. I don't know. We're going to have to figure that out as we go, I guess. So the next thing that I'm going to do right now is try and give these big globes a tooth of some sort. And I'm going to try and use my, um, I've got a little rock tumbler. And I want to try that and see how it works. So in the last video, uh, Planet Series video, uh, I was suggested that I use a rock tumbler, and I happen to have one. I was using this to take the shine off of aluminum chunks so that we could inlay those. I don't, I was actually looking for silica sand, but I thought I had some in my sand blaster, but I don't. So this is the sand that comes with the rock tumbler. And uh, I'm just going to take all of these that are nice and shiny and drop them in here and we'll see what happens. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I won't know until we try. So I'll throw this on the tumbler here, if I can get it closed, while we're cleaning up these. Let's see how we do. I think it's very important to try and give these globes a tooth that way when we cast them again there's no adhesion issues. Uh, the reason why I'm wearing rubber gloves is because they're easier to hold on to. These things are very slick and I must have dropped these about a dozen times but the smaller ones are too small to grab a hold of and hold on to safely. Okay that's enough of that. I'd say that's been at least 40 minutes. So it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like. Uh, I just want to check on these to make sure I'm not wasting my time. <laughs> and if the shine has gone off them, really, that's all I'm looking for. There you go. I think it's good. Yeah, it definitely is. I'm just going to give it a little bit longer. Hmm, do we throw those in there too? Sure. Why not? If I keep making these, I may have to invest in a larger tumbler. See you in about a half hour. So while we're waiting on our globes to be tumbled, I figured that it would be a good opportunity to size these uh, two pieces of black walnut. They do have anchor seal on the ends of them, so it was important to get rid of that prior to casting. And the main reason for that is because the epoxy won't stick to it. And what can happen is if, if you've got a piece mounted on the lathe and it's been covered in anchor seal, then big chunks of epoxy can come off and hit you, and you definitely don't want that. So I did tilt my bandsaw three degrees. That's... Uh, Usually most of the buckets that I use to cast with, it um, that, that will be the correct setting. Uh, again, depends on what you're casting bucket-wise. Uh, you may have to adjust that. But as a general rule, 3 degrees works on um, most of the buckets I have. And then, of course, got to clean it up with the brass-coated brush just to give a nice tooth for the epoxy to bond to and to clean it up because it looked kind of... Parts of it were not the best of shape and blow it out, blowing it out is very important too 
All right, that's been I don't know, at least another half hour, I would say. Unplug this, because I think that we're going to be good to go after that. Yep, it's all scratched up. That's good. Now, I don't know if I'm going to use these half moon ones, but I am going to clean these. These do kind of have a residue on them now, so I'm going to have to take them inside the, uh, the house and clean them since I don't have uh, a sink out here. I will be right back. I wanted to glue these in place for a couple of reasons. I don't want them moving around. <laughs> That's probably the main one, but uh, I don't want to put a weight on it either. That may affect our design. Once that hardens up, we'll be able to uh, install the rest of the globes. Uh, so anyway, these are cleaned up. You can see how it's kind of a matte Ooh, light here. It's kind of a matte surface. And then in there, it's nice and shiny. So you know that the, uh, the rock tumbler worked very well. The other thing I've done is I've taken six of those half globes and glued them together. So we'll put those in like that. Um, and of course all the globes have been cleaned off. These flat spots, we'll have to be careful when we, move, when we glue these in that they're on the outside. Anyway, I'm just waiting on this and we'll be able to move on. Move on further. So when I'm placing these globes in here, you know, I'm, I'm trying to take up as much room as we can. This is a really, really deep casting. And, you know, if we don't try and take up as much room as we can here, almost guaranteed that we're going to get some, <laughs> some thermal cracking. So, and again, you know, layout, I, just, you know, I was just trying to really fit them in and just try and make the best use of them. Ideally, they would be spaced out like larger and smaller and kind of clumped together. Uh, anyway, in the end, I like the look of it and I'm happy with the way that it uh, turned out. For this pour, we're going to be using deep casting epoxy from Designer Epoxy. I believe that this was an 11 inch deep pour. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you're not using deep casting epoxy, you're definitely going to be in trouble. And I think this is certainly one of the best. And of course, to keep with the space thing, we're using black pearl. And of course, some hyper shift, purple, blue, and green is what we're going to put in the main casting. I really like this hyper shift. It is blue dominant, but uh, I really, really like this color hyper shift. All right, I'm going to go in and um, get the casting into the pressure pot and we will do the pour in there because uh, this is probably going to be very heavy afterwards. So, all right, this is three liters. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is not going to do it, but I guess we'll find out. Well, that's going to be take at least, I'd say, another liter and a half. I need to fill this up as, as high as I can because I know this wood's going to absorb a lot of that resin. Be right back. All right, here's another liter and a half. Ideally, I'd like to see that a little higher, but all I'm going to do is burn some bubbles off and get the lid on it, get it pressurized. We're pushing our luck here. Uh, I haven't measured the depth on this, but I'm going to say it's at least 10 inches. So, anyway, torch coming up. Well, how you doing? That looks like some pretty stuff right there. Uh, you know, over the last few years since doing resin casting, I've, <laughs> I've seen some weird things. 
and for whatever reason this is swelled out on the bottom it's not resin uh, this came this is actually five days later and <coughs> excuse me the first three days uh, when they were done I took it out of the pressure pot set it on the bench and just been busy doing other things but uh, <laughs> this has happened while I was sitting on the bench so uh, anyway let's see what we're dealing with hopefully this comes out nice and easy because I don't have this is my last bucket like this and I definitely don't want to break it Looks like our bubble's getting smaller on the bottom anyway, so I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> Whew. Finally. And I managed to save the bucket too. That's the that was the most important thing. <laughs> well. Do not see any thermal cracking. This, when that was poured, it was probably 11 inches deep. We're sitting at 10 and a half right now. So that is awesome. All right, cool. Let's get some centers and uh, get this on the lathe. That'll do just fine. Fairly low RPM at 475. Uh, anything above that, it was uh, it was vibrating too badly. And you know, again, don't get caught up in RPM. Mount the piece on the lathe. Dial up your speed. Once it vibrates, back it off until it stops vibrating, and then um, carry on. Uh, I should mention we are using the number three Hercules from Hunter Tool Systems. And of course, there is a link in the description to get 10% off your next order. Uh, absolutely love this tool. Treat it exactly like a gouge for the most part. So if you're used to using a bowl gouge, this will be an easy transition to switch to this. And you won't be sharpening 20 times every time you uh, work with epoxy. Uh, there are lots of other carbide tool manufacturers out there. Uh, I do have... A competitor to Hunter Tools and I'll be honest with you I struggled to use it and as uh, soon as I got my hands on the Hercules I found it a very easy transition like I said earlier from the bowl gouge to the Hercules because essentially they're treated the same when you're using them. So once we've stripped off the excess epoxy and relieved the majority of the wood then we'll be able to essentially come up with a design now going into this, I pretty much had a design in my head that I wanted to use that I think would make the best use of these globes that are in this casting. So that was one factor. But you know, unfortunately, to give it some style, you're going to end up losing some um, some globes. I mean, that's just that's just all there is to it. There's there's really no way around it. Um, you could, I suppose not in a casting like this because they're combined together with the epoxy but if you have a solid piece of wood then of course you can basically rough it out to the dimension that you're looking at and then of course wrap it in plastic and, and fix any uh, areas that would need epoxy that way and of course that is the most effective way to save on epoxy because hey it's not cheap but uh, I actually really like combining pieces and so unfortunately that's not really an option for me most times when I'm when I'm resin casting. Uh, I do have some pieces coming up here in the future where I'm going to do that kind of um, that type of casting where 
it's a solid piece of wood and we'll turn it and then we'll, we'll go from there but uh, they're still in the kiln still drying I think they've been in there for a good solid six months so it might be coming up here soon uh, it's nice maple pieces anyway uh, I know that a, people, a lot of people really appreciate these Pando views, uh, essentially how I'm holding the gouge. This piece eventually, I put it up, I think it goes to 750, and that's about as high as I can get on this piece. The uh, Something this size, 1,000, 1,200 max, I probably wouldn't go any higher than that. And again, from a safety standpoint, the sooner you can get this mounted in the chuck, the safer it's going to be used. Uh, it's going to be to, to work a piece like this because, yes, you're pinched between centers and it certainly can, go, can come off the lathe at any moment. Uh, really important safety thing is to just drill those little recesses like I did before we mounted it uh, between centers. And then that way it's, well, it's a lot more securely held on the lathe. I will give you the weekly house selling update. Uh, we did actually have a showing and uh, it looked actually quite positive. They had booked um, another showing, which is usually a very good uh, sign and then canceled it. <laughs> they said that they wanted to be closer to town and uh, I'm only about five minutes from town here, so I don't really know how much closer they want to get, but Anyway, it wasn't for them, and maybe we'll see them a little later on as well once they, if they can't find something that uh, can suit their needs. But again, the uh, real estate market here is still quite flat. Um, still waiting for the military to cut messages and for people to come in on house and new trips. So uh, hopefully that will be the case, and um, we'll be able to move forward with our lives and, and the new house in uh, the Brunswick and the move and the workshop it's all it's all a little bit overwhelming to be quite honest with you uh, <laughs> trying to trying to um, do any planning is pretty much impossible until the house sells um, yeah anyway that's 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 all I got for this week hopefully we'll get some showings this weekend so while I was talking, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I did put a tenon on what will be the top and reversed it. So now I'm just cleaning off what's going to be the bottom here. And we're going to, again, put an end grain glue block on the bottom of this. That way, of course, I can do multiple coats of finish and, not, uh, you know, put my hands on the work. I'll briefly talk about last week's uh, video and of course that was the two-part series on making the lamp in a resin shade to go with it. A uh, little disappointed in the video's performance. Uh, I know that we're coming into spring now and I know that people are busy working outdoors and, and getting, getting things ready for spring so I totally get that. Uh, but for the most part, uh, most people I think liked it. I know that a lot were hoping that there'd be more wood in it, but I used two plastic bowls basically as a mold and it just was very difficult to try and find pieces that would work in a casting like that. So, you know, that's why the just a small piece of wood at the very top. I did post some pictures on the community tab of uh, it being used with a black light and it's pretty much exactly what I want it. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks to those who watched it and thanks, a special thanks to the membership. And if you want to become a member of my channel, it's $2.99 a month Canadian. And um, for that, I'll upload pictures through the week of the casting as it's being made. I might even start throwing a little bit of personal stuff in there too. But um, anyway, thank you so much to the membership. I really do appreciate it. All right, we've got the excess epoxy stripped off. Still need to reveal a little bit of the wood here, but you know, for the most part, we're, uh, we can get a good look at this and see what's happening. Uh, the one thing I wanna do is try a black light on this and see where this stuff is at yeah that's pretty cool especially that one 
these will glow eventually, but they need to be charged up. Oh yeah, look at that. That just looks like a like a, a moon or like it straight up a planet. Same with that one. Very cool. Little one there. <laughs> Neat. Uh, it's unfortunate, you know, but we're going to probably lose some of this stuff. But, you know, I was really, right from the get go, because this is so long, I was really thinking about just tapering this off into a foot and tapering this off. And, you know, just kind of one of these numbers. And um, that way, you know, if you were to say put a black light inside of this, that all of these should shine through. That way we're gonna limit how much of this we're gonna lose as well because we certainly could lose a lot if we go in a different direction. So, you know, I think I'm just gonna taper this off first on the bottom here, because this is gonna be our bottom. And then, um, I don't know, we'll, we'll try and figure this out as we go. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think so far. <laughs> You know, today it's 16 degrees Celsius. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna open the the, uh, the door here to the to the garage, and um, nothing but mosquitoes. <laughs> I had to close the doors because I was being eaten alive by mosquitoes, and there's still the odd one kicking around here. Oh, I just can't win. So one of the things that I really like to do in the spring is open up the shop, get some airflow through it, and uh, you know, we've been cooped up here all winter long, unable to open the doors unless, you know, you're you're willing to wear a jacket on a on a fairly warm winter day if you're gonna do some say some stabilizing and cooking, uh, cooking the the stabilizing resin. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was I was actually really surprised. Uh, we've got an early spring this year, uh, which is great and welcome because we certainly haven't had one of those. My wife and I actually were thinking about this the other day that, you know, the, the year that we built this house in 2010 was the last early spring that we've had. And uh, so uh, I was so looking forward to having that nice fresh air flowing through the workshop. But, uh, you know, I was going to have to go and get a get a deposit <laughs> to, to replace all the fluids I was losing to these mosquitoes. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's life here in eastern Ontario, and uh, it won't be long before black flies come. So that's just an added bonus. So things are progressing along quite nicely here, especially near the foot. And you'll see me take some off and take a step back and have a look at things and try and see if I'm happy with that. Uh, I will mention that the cutter is just cutting fantastic. You can tell by the shine that's left on the wood afterwards. Uh, and it, essentially that's just the, the basically the bevel bur burnishing the, the surface of the wood. But usually you, you won't get that shine unless you're cutting things quite cleanly. So that's our first real look at it. Um, that area right there looks really nice. There's going to be lots of chatoyants there. So, you know, overall, I go back and I refine the foot a little bit later on. But for the most part, this is the design that I'm going to go with. And, and this will showcase the globes and showcase the wood the best, I think. Uh, you know, it was important to me to try and leave as much wood in here as possible. And, of course, uh, trying to get all of those globes to be in the final casting is is another goal here and that this shape certainly lends to that i often forget that you know we we're not just all wood turners that watch my content and the word chatoyance may be foreign to a lot of people but essentially if you look at a piece of wood and say it's got a real ripply looking grain in it and uh, but of course when you rub your hand on it it's nice and smooth that's what I'm referring to when I when I say the word chatoyance and it, it kind of shiver shimmers when you move it in the light kind of like a hyper shift if you will 
As you can see, I've got the steady rest in place now to drill this piece out. Uh, don't even think about trying this without a steady rest because it's probably going to go really bad for you. I believe uh, the 2 inch is the largest bit that I used here. Enough to get the Jacob's Chuck in deep enough. And of course I've got the tailstock extender in as well. Since the travel on this tailstock is, is not good. Uh, anyway, I've got a bit that's three inches, but it takes a lot of demand and effort. <laughs> this is a two horsepower lathe, and, and it, sometimes if you a little too aggressive with it, uh, it certainly can bog the lathe down. Uh, this size here is good enough for me. I don't think that I need it really anything larger than this. But I do have the three inch. I should try that again sometime. So before we set up the hollowing rig I'm going to open up this opening as big as I can and um, you're going to see me do a technique that uh, I don't think I've ever shown here on 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 the channel and, and that's I'm going to be turning this from the other side of the lathe the back side of the lathe if you will uh, uh, if you're not aware I am left-handed so this is not comfortable for me to do because of course you're the back your back hand of course is your power hand so by going to the other side of the lathe and leaving the lathe running forward if you're working on the back side of the lathe it is a lot more comfortable to do this than it is to stand in front of the lathe uh, a lot of times i envy you righties it is a right-handed world and a lot of times us lefties are forgotten about but um this actually worked quite well and I was able to remove a fair bit of material before we even set up the, the, uh, the, the Halloween rig, which is coming up soon. All right, we are all set up and ready for hollowing. This is the retrofit tool from Hunter Tool Systems, link in the description. And of course, this is the captive system from oneway.ca. I don't have my laser set up in yet. Uh, we got a lot of material to remove before we're worried about lasers. Uh, yeah, I got the steady rest in, decided to throw some of this painter's tape on here. I guess it's not gonna hurt. Uh, this is actually a fairly deep, uh, vase, I think it's nine and a half inches is what I measured from the top to the bottom here. So, you know, um, we're going to be able to stick hopefully with just the solid boring bar here and uh, hopefully just with the retrofit tool as well. Anyway, I've got my bolt in the back here so that the captive bars can't slide through there. Well, it's up against that, so we can't do it anyway, but. That's just a bit, a little bit of insurance, and uh, yeah, uh, I think what we're going to do though is call our quits here tonight, and uh, we'll be at this first thing in the morning. I think this is going to be really cool. I'm hoping it's going to be cool. Let me know what you think. I guess I should show this. This is the eclipse. It's three thirty in the afternoon. So, kind of, I don't want to put my camera at things too long, but that's kind of what it's like here. It's weird. Kind of like a gray winter day, but it's only 3.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> different and that's your eclipse update hopefully you enjoyed it <laughs> uh actually two or three hours south of here near the kingston area kingston ontario i think that was one of the prime viewing areas so um uh it was a it was a neat thing uh not the first one i've been through actually the i can't even remember the last one we had it looked even weirder than than that outside so 
I knew that, you know, if I didn't say something that people would be wondering about the eclipse and how it looked here, but that's what it was. It wasn't anything overly spectacular, that's for sure. So this piece here did actually have some thermal cracking on the inside of it. And it wasn't until we got deeper into this that uh, we seen it. Uh, it. In the end, it wasn't a big deal because I was able to turn it away. I didn't even throw any glue in it or anything like that. Yeah, there it is right there. Two spots. Uh, didn't think there was any at all in this. And then there they were. But like I said, it was a non-factor. So I'm more or less just taking some rough and cuts here. Uh, I'm not even using the laser at this point. So uh, just trying to whittle this down. And then once we get this a little thinner, then I'll throw the laser in it and, you know, kind of finish off the, the rest of this. But I just didn't really see the point in um, having it on right now. Now, the other thing too is that thermal cracking. If we had to change the design of this where it would have been, a, say, a hollow form, then you know, that thermal cracking probably would have been a factor, but the style of this vase lends to that. And so it was a, a non-factor whatsoever. Uh, 11 inches of depth and only having that minimal amount of thermal cracking to me is a fantastic thing. So thanks again to Designer Epoxy for sending that epoxy and doing what they do. They make awesome products. Link in the description if you want to try some. All right, there's a look inside so far. As you can see down at the bottom, we've got some thing out to do there. And uh, what I've done is installed my laser. So that's what we're sitting at right now. So anyway, we'll thin this out to this um, thickness here and then we'll make it a little thinner and then hopefully we'll be able to move on to sanding. Really hoping this piece looks really cool when the finish goes on and it's lit up. I must say that I am impressed with this little uh, LED light that Cindy Drozda has made. Uh, it certainly illuminates the inside of this vase quite nicely. Uh, a lot of times if you've got the light behind you uh, with the captive system being in the way and your head being in the way, a lot of times it's very hard to, uh, to see what's going on inside of there. Anyway, we're just going to take some final little cuts here and we'll be able to move on to sanding very quickly. Well, all right, that's what it looks like before sanding. Not too bad. I'm going to actually just use a lot of hand sanding up here to flatten this. And then down on the bottom, we'll switch to the, uh, to the power sander. Could be a little better, but I think we're good to go for sanding. So I'm looking for about half inch wall thickness thereabouts. And so by the time, I figure by the time we get done sanding that that's going to be in that neighborhood. If you're looking for flatness as far as sanding, it's going to, I love power sanding, don't get me wrong. But the problem is with power sanding, especially on the inside of a vase like this, there's the three and a half inch dipple disc, I should say, from sandpaper.ca. And first, all the sheet goods, I get them from sandpaper.ca as well. But you know, it, it, the, the sander wants to follow the profile that's already established. So if you flatten it with sheet goods, and then switch over to power sanding, you're going to find that the inside of the vase is going to be a lot flatter and, and overall just a, a better surface. So if you can get your hand in there, that's certainly an option when it comes to making sure the, the inside of your pieces are sanded nicely. Anyway, I sand it to 180 on the inside and now I'm working on the outside, but there's a big pith area and I decided to fill that in with some Sterbon Thin and just some walnut dust that was kicking around. So just sand that back a little bit, blended it in, and uh, we'll be ready for the epoxy coat once we get to 180. All right, what I have here is three ounces of the Pro Series. We're gonna give this an epoxy coat, and then we'll probably just move on with Waterlux tomorrow. I should say this is a barbecue brush too. Silicone barbecue brush. I keep getting asked how do I clean the silicone barbecue brush and uh, I really wish that I could remember who suggested this. Uh, I get, you know, I answer hundreds and hundreds 
of comments each week. So I just, it's very hard for me to <laughs> keep keep things straight and who recommended what, but I certainly do appreciate your recommendations. So keep them coming. Uh, all, all I do is uh, put it in acetone overnight, pull it out in the morning, and it's good to go for the next use. Well, there you go. I'm going to wait till the end to light this up. That, uh, I mean, the blue hypershift in this is just really popping, flowing around the planets. Really, really cool. Definitely see more bubbles coming. So I'm going to throw this back on the lathe, burn those bubbles off, maybe uh, even touch it up a little bit more. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Let me know in the comments what you think. Well, good morning. It is the next day. Lots of bubbles happening. Fully expected that. Uh, the wood looks like it sealed up nicely. So that is the whole goal of that. And um, the epoxy looks flawless as well. So what we're going to do is um, sand this probably from 180 up to 800 and then we'll get our first coat to finish on. Another common question that I get is why am I doing these epoxy coats prior to putting the finish on? So when you're working with castings like this, this one was actually very, very clean and it, you know, I probably could have got away with not um, doing any epoxy coats on this. But there was one or two little areas down inside that needed slight filling and the same thing on the outside. And, you know, the, the, the finish is not going to do that for you. You need to either use CA glue or you need to use an epoxy coat to seal in those little cracks. If there's any little imperfections in the resin, it'll do that. And then once you sand it back, you should have a nice flat surface. So once it was sanded to 800, then of course we're using the Tripoli e buffing compound. And that's Tripoli e as in the city, not three E's. And then after that's done, we use some denatured alcohol to clean it off and get our first coat of finish on. All right, this is the first coat of Waterlux Gloss. Been a few people contact me saying, you know, they're not getting the same results that I'm getting with the Waterlux. And, you know, there's, there's certainly a lot of variables at play here. Uh, how much you put on, how old the finish is, how well your sanding is. Uh, generally, I put on three coats, two or three coats, and I don't do any buffing afterwards. What you see is what you get after the last coat goes on. All right, there it is with its first coat of Water Lux. Looks very nice, actually. I will throw another coat on it just to be sure. But uh, here's what the inside looks like. It's cool how you can see both globes from each side when you look inside of it like that. And my favorite is that blue one. Just the... Uh, the pigment inside of it is really, really awesome. Dying to see what this thing looks like when it's lit up. These ones are pretty cool too, though. All right, so I will do the second coat of Waterlux the same. I'll buff it and then uh, use the denatured alcohol, and then we'll see you when we're doing the bottom. Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, so on to finishing the bottom. Uh, the large vacuum chuck that I have was too large. The medium sized one that I have might have worked, but I was worried about it scoring up the inside of the vase. So I decided to go in this direction. And that's just a piece of birch that I've got hanging out underneath my bench to use in instances like this. So I plan on using some router padding. So I need to leave some space there you have to be really careful because if you do this method and the drive is tapered and you really tighten down the tailstock you could end up cracking the vase so just keep that in mind if you ever use this method and we're just going to use the 5 8 bowl gouge from david ellsworth to clean up the bottom and then i'll be able to switch to the right angled 
air powered sander and it, the base was sanded from 80 to 400. Once that's done, I'll just knock off that little nub, finish sanding the very center of this, and then uh, we'll be able to check this vase out and see how it glows because we haven't actually done that yet. Anyway, I know this was a long video. Uh, thanks to all that have watched it all the way through. I really do appreciate it. Let's get a look at this piece in the dark and uh, hopefully it glows really nicely. All right, let's see how well this glows. Wow. <laughs> I just charge this up with the two UV lights that I have for, oh, five minutes or so. Not even that. Probably about three minutes. <laughs> kind of looks like a face. Nothing on the wood side at all until you get to the other side. Little piece at the bottom. That's what it looks like on the inside. Awesome. How clear that's coming in, but very neat. Well, what do you think? Uh, again, the favorite is the blue. It really actually looks like a planet. Again, another gray day here. I've been getting rain for like five days straight. I can't go wrong with black walnuts. Uh, those glow in the dark globes like this one here are really cool as well. Here is the very bottom. Now, I didn't engrave it just because uh, I need more space when I'm engraving and I don't want to go onto the wood and the resin so it doesn't look good. I prefer to put my handwritten signature on the bottom. Uh, there has been suggestions that people say well I'll use like a, a colored pen like a gold pen or a, a silver pen and I've tried those and what happens is when the finish goes on it typically smears it so that's why you don't see it here. Uh, really the only option if you want something that's absolutely permanent would be to engrave it and then you could of course fill it in with something afterwards but you know I'm out of time it's Thursday I got to get this done and get it uploaded now something that's kind of interesting what I've been doing after I put a coat of finish on and these pieces go into my clean room I've been taking say a five gallon bucket putting it upside down over top of these pieces to keep the dust out of it and what I've been doing is propping up a little bit, just stick a screwdriver underneath one end and that would allow, allow some airflow in there. And I believe that this is the issue because I haven't encountered this with the water lux. There's like small, tiny little bubbles all over the surface of where the wood is. And I think that um, that's, got the fact, that's got to do with the fact that it just wasn't getting enough oxygen to cure the finish. So I'll have to make sure that I keep that in, in the back of my mind next time. You can see it kind of pooled a little bit on the bottom too, which is not normal. Usually when I put it in there um, with adequate ventilation, I guess, it cures and you don't get that. So it's not a big deal. I'll throw another coat on it. But um, anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this piece. I think it's really cool. Uh, not intentional, but yeah, there's a face. <laughs> there's a creepy alien face, if you will. I should give you some sizes. So it's nine and a half inches tall, seven and a half inches at the very widest point. And the opening at the top here is five and a half inches uh, wide at the very top. And it's anywhere from half inch to three eighths of an inch through the piece. Anyway, I really like it, and this piece is for sale. Please send me an email to spragwoodturning at gmail.com, and I will disclose the price then, in case this is a gift. Uh, yeah, cool. Don't forget to put designer epoxy in the comments down below to be entered into the next giveaway at 130,000 subscribers when we get there. I'll be honest with you, it's been really, really slow, and I think that's typically that happens this time of year. It's springtime, I get it. Like there's a lot of things on the go. So uh, I know that eventually people will get back to my content, so I'm not worried about it, but the subscribers, 
has been quite low actually for me anyway uh, so anyway if you haven't subscribed please do that and of course the thumbs up will help with the analytics and YouTube will push my content to others uh, the more thumbs up we get and of course watching the whole video is also a big bonus as well that really works in the algorithm I know that a lot of stuff may be repetitive and people are going to skip through it but uh, by watching the whole video that helps in the algorithm and uh, we'll be able to push my content to others uh, okay what else I guess that's it for now I don't even know what we're going to do next week uh, it's not going to be another planet series thing I don't think anyway <laughs> we're running out of time here for that anyway all right well that's it take care stay safe don't forget the bell please share my videos with your friends that is one of the biggest ways for me to build my presence here on YouTube I really appreciate it and again special thanks to the members and people who gave me super thanks super chats I really appreciate it hopefully we'll see you next week